good morning to all of you now in the present exercise let me demonstrate how to simulate a larger flow sheet typically involving a number of unit operations till now mostly we have been dealing with simulating single equipment of course while solving some problems in the material balances exercise you might have handled simple flow sheets now especially in this exercise i would like to demonstrate simulating a given flow sheet and some of the additional issues that you may have to concentrate on while simulating an entire flow sheet now let me observe uh, the problem present problem as you can see fresh feed consisting of two products uh, sorry two components propylene and propane uh, the composition is known is entering now this is getting mixed up with the recycled stream and enters into the reactor so the reaction taking place is given here and we are required to get about 80% conversion with respect to propylene then the reactor outlet is cooled and then the pressure is reduced to the temperature and pressure at which the flash column is operating we will be able to separate out some product and the unconverted gases are sent back in the form of a recycle but before recycling in order to avoid the built up of this propane inert material some part is purged and the balance is recycled now before you recycle you try to compress it back to the required reactor uh, pressure right now let us try to simulate this problem now we have two components uh, in the feed propane and propylene and the product that is getting formed is hexene and most of the conditions that we have in the entire process is already available remember now when you are trying to simulate this flow sheet in aspen most of these unit operations are going to handle only rating problems so observe what is the minimum information that we may have to provide what is the information that we may have to provide for a typical rating problem the input streams must be known along with necessary equipment parameters for different models now the input stream for this unit happen to be for this entire flow sheet happen to be the fresh feed so we will have to specify the fresh feed along with some specifications with respect to the various units anyway while simulating you are required to observe what exactly is the information that we may have to provide because we will be using this to simulate under rating model now let me go back to aspen so we have three components as we have already observed propane which is an inert material in this particular case propylene then hexene these are the only three components that we are going to handle now go to the next input stream you are required to choose a property model so let us select chavo cedar go to next now select the simulation environment because by default will be in property analysis so let us now create that flow sheet the first unit happen to be a mixer the second unit happen to be a reactor because the kinetic information is not given so there is no other option but to use a stoichiometric reactor then we have a heater to cool of course you can think of using a heat exchanger at a later stage to integrate and find out the utility requirements followed by a pressure reducing valve then we have a flash column then we have a splitter
then finally a compressor. So these are the various units we have in the flow sheet. Remember each and every unit is able to do only rating calculations in general. Now let us connect the material streams. Let us say this is the fresh feed entering into the column. The combined feed enters into a reactor. Then the reactor outlet goes to a heat heater, gets cooled and further the pressure is reduced. And you have the product stream. The unconverted gases are sent into a splitter. A small portion is purged and the balance is recycled before that it is compressed. So typically this is the flow sheet. Let us rename this. This is our product stream. Recycle. In the same way, if you wish, you can also rename these blocks. B2 is reactor. B5 is Slash column. Okay, I think uh, similarly, if you are interested, you can rename uh, other blocks as well, other blocks as well as other streams. Okay, let me go ahead. So, having drawn the flow sheet, now the next step happened. Let us go to the next step. We are required to specify the required information to this flow sheet. Now when you observe this entire flow sheet as a block, what are the input streams going into this? Only the fresh feed. What about recycle? It is internal to the process flow sheet. So we may not have to specify the recycle stream. Anyway, let us observe what does the simulator uh, asks us to provide. So this is with respect to the feed stream as is given. I'm going to enter that information. Feed is entering at a temperature of 150 degrees centigrade, a pressure of 20 bar with a total flow rate of I think 1000 kilomoles per hour. And then the mole fraction is propane 2%. The remaining is 
propylene. Okay, so we were able we were able to specify the feed. Let us go to the next input screen. Now you can see what is the information it is asking. Blocks B1. It is not asking any information with respect to block. Now we are required to provide the hater B3 input. Right, so the temperature and pressure at which the heater is required to operate. So the exit temperature is 120 degrees centigrade. So let us provide that same pressure. 120 degrees centigrade, a pressure of let us say 20 bar upper liquid. Then next. Now we are being asked to provide information with respect to the flash column. What is the outlet pressure in the flash? Valve exit pressure is 12 bar. Okay, so we have specified the block wall. Next, we are specifying the splitter. So, purge is about 2%. So, with respect to purge, the split, split, split fraction is 2%, 0 0.02. So, next. Now this is with respect to the compressor. Now what is required? The compressor outlet pressure should be 20 bar because the fresh feed is coming with 20 bar. Now already the pressure is reduced so that you can have some separation in the flash column. So the recycle must be compressed back to 20 bar. So you choose some type of compressor. Uh, the outlet discharge pressure should be 20 bar. Okay, so we have specified the compressor. Now we are required to specify the flash column. Let us see the conditions in the flash column 120 degrees centigrade and 12 bar. Next, this is now stoichiometric reactor. The temperature the reactor is operating at 200 degrees centigrade and a pressure of 20 bar. So we have to specify the reaction. Propylene, 2 moles of propylene is going to give rise to 1 mole of hexene. And the desired fractional conversion is 0 0.8, 80 percent with respect to propylene. Close. So next, so all the information is complete, the required input is complete. Now I request you to look at the control panel when the simulation carries out. Now there is a lot of uh, mathematics that go into the background, lot of algorithms the moment you are trying to simulate such flow sheets. In fact, for all practical purposes, whatever we are doing here is quite a simple example. In practice, you may have to handle many more units involving maybe more than one recycle stream. Now the simulator has to come up with an order of computation, calculation sequence. We never uh, talked about this, right? So it has come up with some kind of a an order, B, starting with B1 reactor, B3, B4 flash, B6, B7. And why there were so many iterations? Now the required information was we were able to provide. Okay, there was some error. I'll uh, come back to that error. However, we were able to come to a convergent solution. Now the error if you try to see, liquid phase exists either at outlet conditions or at some intermediate conditions. So specify valid phases which allows two or three phases calculation. Okay, that was uh, the mistake. Anyway, we can rectify that. Now I would like you to observe why some of these blocks, in fact you can see here, all these blocks B1 to B7 have been iterated 11 times before you come to a convergent solution. Why was it required? 
now you can see aspen implements sequential modular approach to simulate now that means you can start with one unit right suppose if i would like to because uh, as per the calculation sequence it is starting with b1 now if you want to start with b1 you know the feed fresh feed conditions but what about the recycle does the simulator have any values with respect to the recycle that is coming into the mixer now this mixer model uh, can only perform rating calculations so feed is known but without knowing the other input stream that is going into the mixer how does it calculate the output so whenever you have such a recycle stream typically the recycle stream is going to be considered as a tear stream so that means aspen makes some guess for this recycle stream what do you mean by guessing a recycle stream you may have to guess all the required minimum variables in order to specify the recycle stream as we are specifying something similar to a feed that means we have to uh, assume or guess values with respect to the recycle composition temperature and pressure now guessing values for this recycle it now will be able to calculate the mixer to get the output stream now once you know the input stream to the reactor which is computed from the completing uh, the mixer model now the required specifications for the reactor are given along with the input so we'll be able to calculate three then once you know the input to this heater we'll be able to calculate the output once you know the specifications for this valve will be able to compute this and so on now at the end by the time we come to b7 and solve this we will be able to get another value for the recycle so starting with an initial guess for the recycle we were able to update at the end of one iteration so the simulator is required to compute the recycle stream that has been computed with the one that has been guessed so until and unless these two are closed by as per the tolerance as per the uh, default tolerance now the simulator will have to proceed with more and more iterations till the recycle come to a convergent solution of course the simulator will have to think of some kind of an algorithm to decide where to start which which stream to tear in this particular uh, case i think as you can observe uh, the tear stream happened to be the recycle stream because you are starting with b1 now can i start with reactor instead of b1 now for example there is a possibility if i start with reactor then i will have to guess the input stream that is coming into the reactor because i don't know any value with respect to this input stream without knowing the input stream i'll not be able to solve the reactor so try to tear tear means guess values for the stream now you will be able to solve the reactor to calculate 3 then solve heater model to calculate stream 4 then solve a uh, valve model to calculate 5 and so on so by the time you come here now you will have an update for the guessed stream or tear stream so once again you try to look for convergence if convergence is not achieved you try to go back so there are quite a large number of algorithms that exist to check or to select which one should be the tear stream and there are many criteria if possible we will try to address some of these issues uh, in our uh, theory class now let me uh, work out with respect to that uh, uh, error so go to convergence valid phases are given only for vapor let us also put vapor liquid then reset the uh, simulation and let me once again run it now you can see some of those errors were uh, not there now you will be able to look at the report of course un unless you look at and analyze the output there is no point in simulating any problem try to look what you have been doing and whether you were able to get the required results properly or not okay you can see the results here now these are the of course i did not include the uh, mole fractions now you can see what are the components centering along with each stream right instead of observing all these let us look at one by one to have more clear cut idea uh, let me also introduce the mole fractions 
into the report. Yeah, let us look at now for every thousand kilomoles per hour what was the product we were able to get. Yeah, we were able to get an amount of about 453.29. This is the uh, amount of product that we were able to produce and this is the purity. About 84 percent of hexene we were able to observe. Right? Try to look into each of these streams. I may not be able to discuss with respect to each stream here. I am only concentrating on some of the important ones. Now, similarly, you can see what is the composition of the stream. Now, you can see still there is some small amount of prop uh, hexene, the product going into the output along with the unconverted reactants. Right? Now, Strictly speaking, this should be avoided because this is going to increase the quantity of recycle. Now, you can also look at what is the recycle stream. Now, you can see the total amount of recycle happened to be 328. What is the recycle ratio? 328 divided by 1000. It is not very high because we are getting a conversion of about 80 percent in the reactor. The moment the conversion within the reactor is less, this recycle flow rate is going to be larger. right? Now, in the same way, of course, you can also go into the results of each and every block. Now, let me go back to the problem statement. I, I, I request you to go through each and every block, observe the results along with the streams. right? Now, let me look at the problem statement. Now, you are required to observe keeping the pressure constant, change the temperature in the flash column and observe purity of the product, product flow rate, recycle rate, fraction recovery of product. Right? Let us uh, try to do this uh, between some limits. Remember, there are some limits with respect to the temperature that you will be able to vary. This temperature will have to be between bubble point temperature and dew point temperature. Otherwise, there will not be any meaningful separation. Right? Uh, 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 we have already specified the pressure as 12 bar. So, let me vary the temperature within a shorter limit because we do not know 105 to about 140. Let us try to create some kind of a sensitivity and try to observe some of these variables as a function of temperature. So, purity of the product that means what is the mole fraction of hexene in the product stream, what is its quantity and what is the amount of recycle rate and the fraction recovery of product. Right? What do you mean by fraction recovery of product? Out of the number of moles of hexene entering into the flash column, how many moles you were able to obtain in the product stream? Okay, that is what is meant by fraction recovery. Now, let me handle this sensitivity. Go to model analysis tools. Sensitivity. Say new. Variable we wanted to let us say first define uh, product purity. So, this stands for a stream variable, stream is a mole fraction, stream is product, component is hexene. So, this particular variable is going to represent the mole fraction of hexene in the product stream. Similarly, let us also observe what is the product quantity, PQ. Of course, you can name according to your convenience. Again, this is a stream variable, mole flow. Okay, let me observe only the hexene flow rate, product, hexene, right? And what are the other things that we were asked to 
recycle rate and fraction recovery okay fraction recovery with respect to hexene again it's a stream variable uh this is we already know the mole flow of the product right we need to know what is the mole flow of the inlet so let me write be careful you can also use this kind of things uh, mole flow with respect to which stream let me observe this uh stream 5 if we know the number of moles of hexene entering into the flash column we already know the number of moles of product so we'll be able to calculate this ratio to define what is fraction recovery uh, in fact this is uh, not what is meant by fraction recovery so i'll change that name uh, otherwise you can keep it as it is kilo moles per hour stream happen to be 5 and the component is hexene uh the other one is recycle rate again this is a stream variable type mole flow okay let me take it as stream variable total i wanted to see uh recycle mole flow right say next fill variables next so what is the variable you are going to change a block variable block is flash column and the variable is temperature you can see specify temperature in degree centigrade let us say 105 to about 140 in steps of 5 but if you want you can closely observe that as well say next now you can see this is due to recycle iterative scheme due to recycle and the sensitivity remember what is that we are varying so we are required to calculate the recycle flow rate the sensitivity loop also involves uh because we are required to calculate recycle so all these things are required to be calculated now let us look at the results uh now you can see <coughs> what is happening with increase in temperature for a given pressure remember the pressure in the flash column has been kept at 12 bar so as you keep on increasing the temperature the product purity increases do you agree with this now the chances of having lower volatile components like propane and propylene to be coming along with hexene decreases with increase in temperature for a given pressure that's the reason why the product purity the mole fraction of hexene in the product is going to increase now what is happening to the quality now the quality uh, sorry the product quantity the amount of hexene because it is increasing the amount of hexene also increases of course if you try to observe the actual quantity of the total flow this could be something different because the uh, though there is an increase in hexene quantity the propylene and propane will not be able to come down so the total flow might decrease with respect to the same product stream but we are not inter- we are not interested in producing propylene and propane in the product stream we would like to have more of hexene so this is also advantageous to us as we keep on increasing the temperature but what is the penalty that we may be paying what is happening to the recycle rate the recycle rate increases rapidly with increase in temperature so is it going to be an advantage now you can see the larger the recycle the larger would be the sizes of all your equipment so in order to maintain a particular purity or a particular quality quantity you may have to live up, live up with a larger recycle rate now what is happening to the fraction recovery 
Now this is the total amount of hexene entering into the column. Out of that, this much was able to, you were able to recover this much, right? So you can take the ratio of 435 divided by 483, 442 by 509 and so on and see whether the fraction recovery is increasing or decreasing. Can you guess? For example, the fraction recovery is going to decrease. Now initially it is quite high, 435 divided by 483. But as the temperature increases, now you can have 465 divided by 967, roughly about 50%, starting with maybe about 90%. Why is it so? When you keep on increasing the temperature, the possibility of hexene also to vaporize and go into the top stream from the flash column increases. That's why the recovery decreases. So that's why the entire recycle rate is also increasing. Now, as you keep on increasing the temperature, keeping the pressure constant, you may be able to improve the product purity, you may be able to improve the product quality, but remember, you are going to suffer with respect to the fraction recovery as well as the recycle rate is going to increase. Now, typically speaking, you may have to compromise in order to meet one requirement, you may have to meet with a penalty. Maybe in the case of recycle, you may have to handle a larger recycle rate if you are required to produce a pure product, right? Or if you are required to maintain a particular quantity, quantity again, that may again, add to your recycle rate. And the recovery of the product also may not be that much. In the same way, of course, you should be able to handle the remaining type of problem specifications. Now, the second thing is also very clear. You are required to now keep the temperature constant and vary the pressure. And observe once again uh, similar uh, things. Uh, be careful. Now, you will have to change the pressure within the bubble point pressure and dew point pressure. Let me vary this quickly because we already have this uh, problem statement. Uh, earlier, we were changing the temperature, keeping the pressure constant. Now, I would like to vary. Everything else remains the same. I would like to vary uh, instead of temperature, let us say the pressure. So, specified pressure. Now, this is in bar. Let us vary this from 10 to 12. So, in steps of say 1. Okay, let us run it again. Now, once again, you can observe the sensitivity results. Now, what is happening? As you keep on increasing the pressure, what is happening to the product purity? The product purity is going to decrease. The product quality is going to decrease. The fraction recovery is going to probably improve. Uh, of course, you will have to look at the uh, result, uh, the ratio. And the recycle rate is going to decrease. Right? Try to analyze your problem. Uh, try to to analyze this and try to convince yourself whether this is going to be in tune with uh, the basic fundamentals. Now, remember the temperature is kept constant at 120 and as you keep on increasing the pressure, what will happen? What will happen to the product quality, right? And what will happen to the recycle rate? The amount of vapor generated with increase in pressure in the flash column will have to decrease because you are keeping the temperature constant and the pressure is being increased. Right? So anyway, I will not go into some of these results. You uh, please spend su sufficient time to analyze and see whether some of these results are in tune with some of the basic fundamentals that you know. Now I would like to, similarly, I think you will be able to handle some of these calculations on your own more or less in the same way, either by resorting to sensitivity analysis or maybe design spec. For example, here, what should be the temperature and pressure in the flash column, which would give a product quality of 90 mole percent C6H12. Probably when you varied the pressure, you were not getting 90 percent, but when we varied the temperature, you were able to get about 91 mole percent uh, uh, hexene in the product stream. I think you can check up what is the temperature corresponding to a given pressure. Right? Similarly, can you maintain the mole fraction of propane in the inlet stream to the reactor below 0.05? Let us observe what is the mole fraction of propylene in this stream. Uh, propylene is about point, sorry. What is the product I am 
uh, sorry propane is about 0.048 so already it is within 5% so there is not much that you can do of course uh, because we were using the required conditions if you are required to maintain that if this value is larger than what is specified maybe you may have to vary the purge in order to minimize the built up of inerts that goes into this reactor right that can be done by using some kind of a design spec similar problems have been done while doing material balance calculations or some of the problems in material balance exercises now i would like to especially demonstrate this particular example now remember when you are trying to uh, do sensitivity study of course you can vary more than one variable right but you are required to observe some of these values uh, product quality fraction recovery recycle flow rate at the following conditions of temperature and pressure in the flash column 10510 10512 120 12 130 12 14012 let us try to uh, do this exercise now once again let me go back to sensitivity please observe this this is uh, slightly new we have not uh, been handling this till now now we have varied pressure keeping the temperature constant right at 120 now i would like to vary another variable as well it is again a block variable block is flash column and variable is temperature I don't know what are the limits of temperature. One not five, one twenty, one thirty, one forty. So lower limit is one not five. Upper limit is one forty, and the increment, let us say, is five. Right. Let me run this problem. so whenever there are errors try to be careful so some rows completed with errors that means we will see when we look into the results we will be able to know yeah there are some warnings this probably you were not able to come to a, at 10 and 140 uh, there could be some issues with respect to convergence i think we can address those issues uh, if you have a problem like that you please try to talk to me uh, while doing the laboratory <coughs> now what is that we are required to find out we are varying the pressure from 10 to 12 bar and the temperature is varied between 105 to 140 now you can see because you are varying two variables now keep the pressure constant at 10 and repeat this problem for all the possible temperatures right 105 to 140 similarly you increment the pressure <coughs> to the next value repeat for all possible temperatures and similarly you once again inc uh, increment uh, the pressure to 12 bar repeat this for all the temperatures uh, that we were trying to vary but this is not what exactly we are required to do we are required to observe exactly at this given set of values 10510 10512 12 12 12 of, of course we can avoid that 11 by changing our problem specification let me go back to the input Uh, variable one, we gave the increment as one. I can say two, so that that eleven pressure eleven can be avoided. So let me run it again. Okay, look at the results. Ah, uh, yeah. now you can see 10 all possible temperatures 12 all possible temperatures but typically we were unnecessarily calculating at 10 bar we are required to calculate for a temperature of only 105 we don't require at all other temperatures similarly when the pressure is 12 we need to calculate at 105 120 130 and only 140 so this is not uniformly being incremented whereas when you normally vary two variables for all possible combinations of those two variables we try to calculate what is required now how are we going to observe specifically for a given set of values as suggested in the problem statement like 105 10 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120 120
one not five. Uh, sorry, whatever, whatever are those values? Now let me go back and try to change this as case study. Right, both one as well as two. So go back to click on this case study and go to cases. The moment you click on cases, now remember we were not asked to give lower limit and upper limit for each of these variables, right? So those limits are going to be now defined within these cases. So case one, okay. Case one, okay, doesn't matter. Very, very one is pressure. We wanted this at ten. Very two is one not five. If I'm right, so one not five ten, right? So the next two. Yeah, you can add if you want. Twelve, one not five. Yeah, one not five twelve. One twenty twelve. One thirty twelve. One forty twelve. So you add those cases. The pressure from now onwards. Is constant at twelve. One twenty. Twelve. One thirty. Twelve. One forty. So we were not asking to calculate as we did earlier in the case of sensitivity for all possible combinations, and we are telling the simulator that I am interested only in these specific cases. The variable pressure should be ten, and the corresponding temperature is one not five. Observe all the results with respect to this set. Similarly, for all these four or five combinations. Now let us run this problem and look at the result. So the unnecessary calculations were avoided. Now you can see ten, one not five. What are the required results? Twelve, one not five. What are the required results? Twelve, one twenty. Twelve, one thirty. Twelve, one forty. Twelve, one twenty. I think this is what has been actually given originally as the specification for the flash column. That that's why it is repeating. In fact, you could have avoided that case because anyway it will calculate for the given set of conditions, right? Once again, I advise you to look into this and. Consider what is a better possibility. Remember, as you keep on increasing the pressure, what is happening to the product purity? Product purity may decrease, right? But the fraction recovery may increase, and the recycle rate may decrease. This may be an advantage, but you are suffering with respect to product purity. Now, as you keep keeping the pressure constant, as you increase the temperature, you can observe the recycle rate is increasing. But the product purity is going to increase. As I said, one possibility for obtaining 90% could be 12 and 140, or exactly keep one constant and find out the other that gives you the required purity of about 90%, as is the case for uh, one of these requirements. Right. So be careful. Whatever you try to do, you try to now observe what is going to happen and analyze the results carefully before you go on or move on to any other problem. Now, in the same way, there are some more design specifications that are given in the next exercise with respect to the same flow sheet. Now, because you have been already able to handle some of these design specifications or sensitivity analysis, I hope you should be able to conduct some of these. Right. So, I'd like to close with this uh, demonstration for the time being. Now, you can carry out any such examples. Though this is a simple flow sheet, you can also have a look at the control panel. Right. Yeah, you can see 
the converging tear stream here happened to be chosen as recycle. Of course, uh, maybe in different problems, the tear stream itself is being uh, found out by the simulator by using some kind of an algorithm which will give you the required solution quickly. There are quite a large number of algorithms available to choose this tear stream and also uh, whether there is any possibility to partition the problem or the finding out the calculation sequence and things like that. Probably some of these issues I would like to discuss in the next class. Thank you.